All right, well, hello, and it's week 10. I feel like that's uh, that's something to celebrate in and of itself. I hope you guys had a, uh, a good weekend. Uh, I did in terms of just, I, I took the time, I took time off to, uh, to unwind. And I know, you know, I know it's week 10 and you have probably like papers and projects and things due and you have study uh, finals around the corner, but I'm actually thankful for this kind of three day weekend um, where I hope you spent, you got to at least enjoy one full day kind of off and resting. And, and maybe, maybe you did not because there was too many things swirling around in your head. But, uh, but, you know, I, I'm thankful for it. I was able to kind of just relax and, you know, I kind of ignored some of my responsibilities and duties and, you know, and I, I apologize, I sincerely apologize. I said I was going to record a video talking about what was going to be covered on the final and I never actually recorded that video. I, I posted a document, but, uh, but I didn't record a video. So I will eventually do that. I'll probably do that tonight after the lecture ends, um, kind of going over that and I'll happily answer any kind of um, questions you have about the final. Uh, I decided to kind of cut down the uh, the length of the final down to uh, an hour and a half rather than kind of three hours and I'll kind of make sure that the uh, the allotment of time time aligns with the um, length of the problems and, and things of that nature. I still I have to apologize I'm still catching up on grading um, grading midterm two. And, um, and I will have to get grades input uh, for that. Uh, I asked the uh, grader to finish grading homework five uh, this weekend. So you by this weekend, you should have, um, I'll try to get uh, midterm two graded as soon as possible. I'm hoping by tomorrow at the latest. And so at least those grades will be posted. Uh, homework five grades should be posted. And then I'll also kind of compute, you know, whatever. Uh, attendance quiz or view quiz and campus wire and things things like that those those should all be kind of get in there and so you know all that will be left will be homework six and the final exam um and uh and that will be it um today i'm going to cover uh i'm going to i don't know cover is not the right word i'm going to kind of introduce and talk a little bit about this package called tidy models and um and then probably on Friday, I will give my uh, like an end of year <laughs> pep talk and uh, <laughs> something probably not too related to class. And uh, there will be no view quiz um, for Friday. So today will be kind of your last actual view quiz. Um, and uh, well, I don't know. I don't know how you guys felt about the view quizzes. I know they might have been a little bit tedious and annoying at some time at some point, but uh, hopefully they they were provided just a little bit of a motivation to kind of keep you on track with watching um, the lectures. You guys um, have uh, you guys have consistently attended in class, and I'm so thankful for that. But uh, but I also know a lot a large portion have been watching uh, videos um, after the fact on YouTube, and uh, that's totally fine. And as long as you watched the videos and kept up, uh, I'm happy with that. Um, will I have a view quiz on the short video? No, I will not have a view quiz on the short video covering contents of the final. Um, and yes, just to confirm the content from this week, which is basically this thing, this one lecture on tidy models will not be on the final. And so, yeah, the final exam is not cumulative and will basically cover lecture six, three through nine, three. I think I don't know the actual numbering of the lectures off the top of my head in terms of the content. But basically what I put in that document uh, will be what you can expect. And I won't, um, I won't venture to, you know, far away from you know, what I put in the document. And, and I'll, again, record a little bit of a video kind of covering, um, I don't know, explaining a little bit more. I think it, I'll just kind of be reading the document, but maybe explaining some more details there. Uh, I don't know if there are any other questions before I get started. No. Okay. All right. So, um, well, I hope, I hope you've, I don't know. It's, it's hard to say. I hope you've enjoyed the course when we are, you know, doing it online 
in this kind of remote setting. And, uh, you know, if we were in person, I could really kind of genuinely say like, I hope you enjoyed the course and, uh, and, and feel good about saying that. And I, I guess I'll say, I hope you feel like you learned something uh, in the class and I hope you feel like, um, you gain something of educational value uh, from the course. Um, and, you know, and I, I know um, it, the distance learning online thing has been, uh, it's been hard for me. I imagine it's been hard for you as students. Uh, and, and many of you have told me uh, that as such, that it has been hard and, and I'm fully empathetic uh, to that. And, you know, and I especially, you know, my heart goes out to anybody who is a transfer student who's going to be gra graduating this quarter, who, you know, you were supposed to have two years at UCLA and you really got like 1.8 quarters on campus. And the, uh, the other, I don't know, every, everything else has been online and that, that just sucks. And, um, and I'm sorry. Um, I, you know, I wish things were different. And um, well, you know, uh, anyway, well, I guess I'll go more into this on Friday. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, let's talk about tidy models. And, um, and let's go from there. Okay, so, um, so tidy models, what is this thing, right? So I have like three slides here. Uh, and then we'll go on to kind of a thing. All right, there's this uh, important um, person in the kind of data science uh, community and especially the R language community. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of Hadley Wickham. Uh, and the other important person, or another, not other, there's, there's many who are important, uh, is also Max Kuhn, okay? Max Kuhn also works for R Studio. R Studio has probably the best R programmers um, out there. So they have Hadley Wickham working for R Studio and Max Kuhn also works for uh, R Studio. And uh, Max Kuhn has uh, authored some very important contributions to kind of machine learning and statistical analysis, especially in kind of the R, R world. And one is this textbook, Feature Engineering and Selection. And I don't know if you've heard of this textbook or not, Feature Engineering by Max Kuhn. This is kind of a, Uh, it, it's it's an, uh, a popular book. It's a good book. You can actually read the entire textbook for free um, in your browser, okay? Uh, or you can actually purchase the uh, a hardcover book uh, from Amazon or the uh, publisher's website, okay? And and it's a, <laughs> it's a big book, okay? But it's uh, it's very good. Um, Max Kuhn also. In, authored this package called Carrot, okay? This is, uh, this package has been around for a very long time, at least as far as machine learning goes. Uh, it's first published way back in 2007. And I know that, I don't know if that seems like a long time or doesn't seem that long, long ago. Um, but uh, that's been an important package for machine learning. It's been kind of worked on and refined and can do kind of a, a whole lot, okay? And you can kind of, uh, read up about it uh, here, okay? And he's also the primary author for something called Tidy Models. And Tidy Models is the successor, I would say, the successor to Carrot in that it kind of is gonna be powering all sorts of machine learning models and things like that. And one thing that uh, Tidy Models does is it addresses one of the biggest complaints against R, okay? And so, you know, when, when we talk, we talk about Python and we talk about R and we say, you know, which one should you use, Python versus R? And in our department, being the statistics department, we've we've selected R as our primary language, and then we, you know, we teach these classes of Python on the side and stuff like that. Um, but then, you know, when you go applying for jobs, you see, you know, people want Python, and and you have people kind of hating on R, and that always kind of hurts my feelings. And one of the arguments against R is they'll say, you know, with R, it's a, a lot more kind of decentralized and you'll have like, you know, a thousand different packages out there and you probably have like three or four packages that all kind of do similar features, right? You have like, if you wanted to do say um, regression trees, which is not something we covered in our class, but maybe, maybe you'll learn in 101C, 
you know, there's like several packages out there that can do kind of regression trees. And, and it can be a frustrating experience because um, when you do uh, regression trees under one package, you have these keywords and you do regression trees with another package, it's, you know, done in a different way and a regression tree in another. And it can be kind of annoying and, and Python kind of avoids a lot of that because there's really just one machine learning package that everyone uses, sklearn, and, um, and it has this very kind of unified format. And so what tidy models does is it actually kind of wrangles a whole bunch of these different packages that do similar features and gives it a unified interface. It allows you to kind of interact with these different packages and use, because uh, each of these packages do offer something unique that, um, you know, as far as, you know, it, it might, find the regression tree in a slightly different way. And a lot of these things do offer something unique. And what Tidy Models does is it allows you to kind of interact with these different things without having to like study the documentation in great detail to learn exactly, um, or, you know, to have to rewrite your code so that it uh, does everything, you know, just slightly differently to uh, use these different things, okay? And so, um, um, so that's kind of Tidy Models. There are, uh, there's a lot of documentation and there's actually a, a textbook uh, as far as that goes, okay? And so kind of the core of tidy models is it's kind of like uh, you have um, the tidyverse, which has a whole bunch of um, packages for kind of manipulating data and tidy models has a whole bunch of packages designed around creating kind of these machine learning models and a lot of packages that kind of set things up, right? And so um, you have these packages, R sample. R sample is just, it's a, a simple package. And what it's used for is it's gonna create training and testing splits of the data. So, you know, we talked about kind of cross validation and having a test set uh, and things like that. And R sample will take, you know, whatever kind of input data you give it, you can kind of say, you know, I want you to create this train and test split, and um, and I will do that. Okay, uh, and again, Parsnip is this package uh, again, and that's a, a kind of a key thing where you can interact with a whole bunch of different packages and not get bogged down by the syntactical differences. So Parsnip creates that kind of unified thing where you say, you know, if I want to do um, a thing with regression trees or some kind of random forest you know, the number of trees I want created, I'm gonna just say trees is equal to this. And then you can say, you know, employ this package or this package or this package, uh, and it will be able to kind of implement it, right? And so they're kind of uh, continually updating Parsnip to interact with kind of new packages. And so every kind of, every time like a new package that, you know, gets updated, they'll, they'll kind of uh, refine Parsnip. And so there's kind of a catalog of packages that Parsnip is able to work with, right? Because because somebody is, uh, when they're updating Parsnip, they're saying, you know what, when you do trees and you use this package, you know, the, you're actually supplying the argument n underscore trees. And when you use this package, um, trees is gonna update this part, you know, number of trees or something like that, right? So somebody's kind of providing the translation services between Parsnip and, you know, the underlying packages so you don't have to worry about, um, so you don't have to worry about it, okay? Uh, there's another package called Recipes, and that is going to uh, do um, some data pre-processing, right? And so a lot of times you'll have kind of your raw data, and from your raw data, you need to do some data cleanup, okay? Or you need to uh, add new columns, right? Like, uh, you know, find the ratio between these two columns or, um, do, do some kind of uh, work there and recipes can kind of uh, help you with that as far as um, doing that, okay? You have workflows, which will um, kind of bundle these different aspects together and, um, and they will, um, and that allows you to kind of apply, you know, whatever you did to this one data set say from uh, March, 2021, you can say, you know, I have a brand new data set from February, 2021, or, you know, April, 2021, and I need to kind of do the same kind of things where I'm going to 
you know, uh, center and scale, you know, these columns and I'm going to adjust them. And so you can kind of create a workflow to, um, it's almost like a, a macro script where it's going to kind of perform the same operations, but for like a new set of data and things like that. Okay. Um, there are a couple other things, tune, yardstick, and broom. Okay. So tune, you know, is for figuring out what hyperparameters. So, you know, when you do SVM, yeah, you have to figure out kind of your gamma and your cost. You might want to like adjust things there, or if you're uh, doing K means clustering or K nearest neighbors, what K should you use? And so these are these hyperparameters. And we often said, you know, we do cross validation to kind of help us decide. And so tune is used to do that. Yardstick is used to kind of measure your model. You know, you're, you're going to measure, you have some kind of metric that says, this is how my model is performing. And it could be as simple as mean squared error, but there's a whole bunch of other metrics that, that exist inside of Yardstick. And then Broom, so, sorry, there's all sorts of things and I'm just kind of listing them off here. Broom takes the output of a model and it actually makes them something that you can kind of use. Uh, so for example, in R, if you fit a linear model and you do LM, you know, Y tilde X, you know, its output will be, um, you know, it just kind of prints something out to the screen. It'll say, here's the intercept and here's the slope. And, uh, and what Broom does is it kind of takes all of the outputs and puts it into a table, uh, a tibble actually. And you can say, you know what, I want to get the slope and I want to get the intercept or I want to get the standard error. I want to get all of these things. And you can actually kind of reference these values because they're in, a, in kind of this table-like format that, um, that make, makes it useful. Okay, so anyway. All of this stuff, I've, I've just been talking about this. Um, all of this is covered. Uh, well, we will take a look at this. And, and so basically, I'm just going to be following this tutorial from tidymodels.org slash start. And I'll, I'll, we'll just kind of talk through it and walk through it. And, um, and again, I would encourage you, if you are planning on doing some kind of machine learning project with R or something like that, uh, I would say give, uh, give tidy models a look, OK? Um, you know, we've covered a lot of kind of the algorithmic basics and, you know, in your, in your homework, I had you kind of code a lot of these algorithms by hand. Um, but again, the truth is, is you're not going to do any of these things, you know, the code that you've written, you know, as proud as you are of it, that you, you know, you've, you wrote the, wrote the algorithm for, you know, the EM algorithm, or, you, you know, you figured out K-means clustering and all of that. Um, probably you're not going to be using that in real life, okay? Probably these prepackaged versions of these different packages are going to be a little bit more streamlined, a little bit more efficient than, um, than a lot of the stuff that you might have written. Now, I mean, some of you are very gifted and talented and have written some very highly efficient code already. Um, but again, uh, you know, you have the advantage by using these um, versions that already exist, you have the advantage of, you know, there's lots of other people whose eyes have seen it and have kind of, uh, you know, reported bugs and things like that. So, so they're going to do that. And again, a, a frustrating aspect is that, you know, there, there might be syntactical differences. And so tidy models kind of helps address that. And, uh, and I would, you know, suggest uh, giving it a look. Okay. And so, um, you know, <laughs> with whatever free time you have, right? Um, you can take a look at the uh, the textbook and you can also kind of work through um, the tutorial, um, which probably get through maybe the one or two sheets of the tutorial, okay? And then there's a lot more examples of, you know, say, you know, fitting one type of model or something like that. And I think kind of following along the examples is a good way to learn. And then when you feel comfortable, you can say, all right, here's a new data set and, uh, and let's try that out. All right, let me go ahead and give you your first uh, view quiz answer. Last view quiz of the quarter. Uh, first one today is B, B as in bear, B as in bear. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, so this again, I've taken directly from the tutorial website. I cannot claim any credit for any of this stuff. Um, 
All right, and so, um, so first we're gonna kind of load in uh, a few packages and, um, uh oh, did I break this? Okay, so it's knitting this. Uh, you know, I had already knitted it, but okay, well, we'll just re knit. What did I do? All right, my computer is just dying here. Okay, well, um, we're gonna um, we're gonna load up this data set, this sea urchins data set. Okay, and apparently um, there was some experiment where they had all of these kind of these sea urchins and they give it, they had different feeding regimens. <laughs> and, um, and then they measured how big the sea urchins grew, right? And so they said, you know, like if we give it like uh, a bunch of food every day or versus like, you know, little amounts of food and things like that. And they're measuring how the, uh, the sea urchins are growing. Okay, I think. I broke something here. Oh dear. I hope this thing. All right. So, okay. This is before I broke it. I hope it still looks uh, okay. All right. So, um, uh, you can download the, uh, the sea urchin data, but we're going to, uh, we're going to read that in. Okay. And so, you know, I'm just using, we're just using some, um, or they used, uh, some packages or functions that are familiar to us. So they're going to read in the sea urchins data set, okay, and then they're going to set the names of the columns because I, I believe this sea urchins data set. If you look at the CSV file directly, actually, um, okay. Well, so they're going to set the uh, the column names of the sea urchin um, data set to food regime initial volume and the width. And as far as the food regime, it comes in as a string, but they're gonna make it a factor because it's a categorical variable, all right? And so you have the initial food regime, the uh, low food regime and the high food regime, okay? And so this is gonna get loaded in and this is the urchins data. And we can kind of just take a look at um, how the, uh, the sea urchins are growing, right? And so they can say, all right, so under the initial food regime, these are, um, or under the food re regime uh, initial, this is uh, kind of its initial volume 3.5 and the width, the volume five, and this is the width. And so we're just kind of looking at this, right? And, uh, and so we know um, kind of whether they are in the initial low or high food regime, the, their size at the start of the experiment and how wide they got the suture width I guess that's how you can measure sea urchins at the end of the experiment, right? So this is their initial volume at the start and then kind of the, the width at the end, right? And so, you know, here's just a kind of a plot of the initial volume and the width. And we wanna see, you know, is there kind of a difference? You know, if we look at uh, some sea urchins with the same, you know, similar initial volume, is there a difference and they're kind of ending width between the uh, uh, the different food regimes here. Okay, and so um, so we have these these different different measurements. Okay, so, so it says we can see urchins that were larger in the volume at the start tended to have wider sutures uh, at the end. Okay, um, but you know are there but the slopes look uh, different so. Is it affected by kind of the different food regimes, right? So, um, you know, there, there's a difference here. Okay, so here, if if we were doing this kind of classically, we might build just some kind of uh, linear model in ANOVA, right? And you would probably do LM, 
and you do the width, which is kind of the, the response variable, okay, tilde, and then you do initial volume times food root, um, times food underscore regime. And that's gonna do um, the volume, uh, kind of treat, treat that at, um, as a numeric variable and food regime as a categorical. And it's gonna also look at the interaction between them, right? So the star kind of does that. Have you guys taken 101B and, and done something like this? Some of you have, I think most of you have. Okay, so this, hopefully this looks familiar from 101B and if it has, if it doesn't, um, at least uh, a little bit, yeah, also in 101A uh, as well, right? And so, so this is gonna be kind of a two-way uh, ANOVA model and you do something like this and you throw this inside LM, okay? Now, when you use, um, when you use tidy models, you're gonna have to do a few extra steps. And, and at first you're gonna be like, yeah, this seems dumb. Like, why do I have to do it this way? Okay. Okay. So first you're gonna kind of initialize the functional form here of the model, right? And so as far, um, as, far as the parsnip packages go, there's a few kind of functional forms. And one of them is a linear regression model, right? Because we have a, a numeric outcome and we kind of want um, the inputs to be linearly related, which is basically what we would have done with uh, LM, right? So we're doing some kind of linear regression model. And so we're gonna specify this. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, you know what, we just want to use the plain old LM engine from R. So R has the LM engine and all we're gonna do is we wanna use that engine LM. So we're gonna say linear regression and we use the pipe and we say, we're gonna set the engine to LM. And this just refers directly to R's internal LM engine. And this tells Parsnip, use R's LM engine, okay? And, uh, and so this is how we would go ahead and do this, okay? And so we're gonna do this and we're gonna create kind of our model. And so we say linear regression, set the engine to LM, and we're gonna store that as linear model, right? So we're gonna, um, save this uh, model object as lm underscore mod, right? And you can, again, always check the documentation for kind of more information on how uh, something like this goes. And you can, there's a few different um, models that you can be used for uh, linear regression models. And so we've got lm, which is uh, the, the basic, um, but you can also kind of use uh, glmnet, uh, which we briefly talked about where you have, um, which incorporates the lasso and the um, ridge regression or elastic net. Uh, and then there's also a, a few other things. So STAN is used for kind of Bayesian things, which we have not covered. Um, and you know we, we cover a few basic concepts in 102C, but not too heavily, all right? And then um, there's also Keras, which does neural networks and things like that. So there's a few engines, uh, Spark, I'm not too familiar with Spark, but apparently that can be uh, incorporated. So these are kind of different things that can be um, can be done here. Right now, we're just going to do plain old LM, right? And then finally, we are going to fit the model. So we're going to take this model that we created, and we're going to say fit using this command. And so this, this part looks familiar. We're going to say width um, based on initial volume times food regime. We're gonna multiply, uh, say the data comes from the urchin's data table, and then we're gonna store the output of LM fit, okay? And this is gonna be the output of LM fit. The output of LM fit looks like this, okay? And so we get, uh, we get the intercept, we get a, a value for initial volume, right? So initial volume is a numeric value, so this is kind of the slope. And then we have, um, Food regime is categorical, right? And so you kind of have uh, initial, which is kind of the base. And then we say, you know, basically the adjustment for food regime when it's low, and you have the adjustment for food regime when it's high. So you have kind of, basically it turns the factor into a dummy variable. And so when food regime is initial, um, you have a zero for here and a zero for food regime high. When it's low, you have one for food regime low, and zero for food regime high. And then when you have food regime high, you have a zero for this and a one for this, okay? And so this is, gets added. And then also you have the interaction effect for, um, 
in initial volume and the low food regime and initial volume and the high food regime. So you have basically a slightly different slope for initial volume when it's on low, slightly different slope when for initial volume when it's high. Okay, and this is just the slope when it's, um, I guess, food regime initial. All right, and so, um, so you have this, and if you wanted to, you can use basically, this is the broom, uh, kind of what the broom package does, is this kind of output perhaps is useful, but you can actually get a tidy output of this, which will format it into a table that we can interact with directly, right? And so um, the summary can kind of, summary function is often useful for LM, but then sometimes you just want, you want to actually use these numbers itself. And so by being in a table, you can say, you know, I want the estimate and you can take the column estimate, or I want the column standard error and you can take this column for standard errors, or I want the statistic itself, the test statistic and the corresponding p-value, and you can extract all of those values, right? And so looking at this, we can see, you know, initial volume and intercept are significant. These things, food regime low and food regime high, actually do not have significant p-values despite their estimates being somewhat larger, okay? And then these things also, this is not significant. This one perhaps is, okay? And, uh, and if you, if we can create a, um, using um, ggplot, we can create a plot of the values of the estimates plus their error bars, right? So we can create um, a dot and whisker plot, which is what this is. This is a dot and whisker plot. We're gonna put the dots located, taking basically tidy LM fit, right? Taking that data, we're gonna make a dot and whisker plot and we're gonna take um, the whisker arguments, uh, I'm sorry, um, we're gonna create um, plots based on these estimates. And so this dot and whisker plot already expects the data to come in the, uh, the tidy LM fit and it, and it extracts out the information. And so these are all just kind of options as far as, um, as, far as these go, all right? And so this actually, this lines up as well with what we see, initial volume being significant we can see the error bars there do not cross the zero. And food regime low is, um, you know, takes in this, this value 0 0.0198, which is right here, but it has a large uh, standard error. And so if you kind of go out the, um, you know, 1.96 standard errors, um, it crosses zero, indicating that it's not significant. Okay. Question says, for the fit function, would the syntax change based on the engine used? So, uh, no, that's actually the, the beauty of this. Well, I'll show you in a moment. We will change the engine to the stand engine. And so even though you've never used stand before, you can kind of uh, incorporate it. You know, stand requires a little bit more uh, initial setup. So we'll, uh, I'll show you how the, the fit um, syntax changes, okay? Or, or, or doesn't, okay? And then so once, once you have that, you can then use the model to make predictions, right? So here you can say, well, what if uh, the initial volume is 20 and I wanna try initial low and high, right? So you can, so we can kind of say, all right, what if the initial volume is 20 and what, what are my predictions for, um, you know, the low, low uh, initial low and high, initial low and high, and we can see what kind of values we get here, right? And so to kind of create uh, the new points, they use this function expand grid. And they say, you know, initial volume 20. If you give it a vector here, then it would have all, all possible combinations. So this has all possible combinations between the value 20 and these three values. You could give it a vector of say 20 and 40, and you get values at 20 initial low high, 40 initial low high uh, for all of those things. Okay. So anyway, these are going to be our new points. And then now that we have the fitted thing, which we've created back here again, we did LM mod and we fit. So this is the fitted model. Once you have the fitted model, we can say make a prediction using the fitted model using these new data points. And it says we're going to predict at 0 0.064, 0 0.058, and 0 0.096, right? So initial we predict at 0642, which if you come back here, 20.0642 is going to be uh yeah right around there okay and then for um 
the low, it predicts 0588. So again, at 20, where is 0 0.0588, it's gonna be, this is 0 0.06, so it's a little bit under there. So right around that purple line. And then lastly, the high is at 0 0.0961. So if we go up back to this line, 20, 0 0.0961. Uh, right here would be 0 0.1 down here in the halfway between this gray line, these two gray lines would be 0.09. And so, yeah, right around where that kind of orange line fits, right? So this is kind of, um, so it makes sense because we fit kind of a smoothed out line using a linear model. So, so that, that is what uh, we would end up predicting. Okay. All right, so we use this. Uh, if we had used LM to fit the model, okay. Um, we would have to do uh, predict.lm, and um, you know if we decided to use a different model, uh, there's going to be a different syntax as far as predicting. Okay, and so again, what tidy models does is it unifies. How do you make predictions? How do you fit models and things like that? Okay, so that um, depending on the model that you fit and you want to make predictions, how do you go about doing it? You have to make very minimal adjustments, okay? You can also say, um, I wanna make confidence intervals as far as predictions, right? So as far as saying, I wanna make confidence intervals for my predictions, okay? Using tidy models, it's very simple. You just say predict, here's my new set of data points and the type of predictions I want now is gonna be a confidence interval thing, okay? And then it, it outputs this, okay? It outputs this and we get a lower and upper bound a lower bound and upper bound for a prediction. And so we can take um, our predictions and the confidence interval values, and we can kind of bind those together, right? So we can take, here's, here's the initial, uh, the new points. Let's add this column here. And we're gonna add this column and that's what these things do, bind the columns. And then we can create a plot using ggplot saying, okay, initial value, and this is all, all for um, the volume being at 20. This is kind of our prediction with error bars. Here's the prediction for low with error bars. Here's our prediction for high with error bars, okay? And again, kind of getting different formats as far as you know, how our prediction goes with tidy models is, is pretty simple, okay? Okay. So let's take a look at how tidy models works if we use a different engine. Okay. Well, I'm going to run out of time. I guess we're only going to get through this thing here. Um, second view quiz answer for today. Second view quiz answer is the letter D. D as in dog. D as in dog. Okay. So it says, <laughs> um, they make up a story. It says, everyone on your team is happy with that plot, except for that one person who just read their first book on Bayesian analysis, and they're interested in knowing if the results would be different if we used a Bayesian approach, right? And so they have, you know, some a pr a prior distribution that needs to be put on the um, on the things. And so um, they say, after some discussion, the group agrees that the priors should be bell-shaped, but since no one has any idea what the range of value should be, they will take a conservative approach and make the priors wide using a Cauchy distri distribution, which is the same as a T distribution with one degree of freedom, right? So this is, the Cauchy distribution is so wide and the tails are so, so huge that they're at, the mean actually doesn't exist. <laughs> it's centered at zero, but there's no mean. Uh, the mean, mean actually can't be found. Um, okay, so you can do kind of Bayesian analysis using um, STAN, okay? Using STAN. And so um, what we're gonna do is, um, for Stan, we're going to use the R Stan package, okay? And we're going to um, use Stan underscore GLM, and you can define kind of the prior distributions there, right? So, so that you know, there is a little bit of uh, look up here that you have to kind of um, figure out, okay? And so, um, you know, you have to learn a little bit. Okay, but as far as fitting the models, making predictions, that part is going to be um, fairly uh, 
similar from, from one engine to another, okay? So here, to specify our new engine here, we're gonna say, okay, we're going to use STAN rather than LM. And in order to use STAN, we do need to um, give it some prior distributions, okay? So the prior distribution will be our prior distribution, which we've defined here. And this is gonna be a student's T distribution with one degree of freedom, all right? And this is, this is gonna um, come from within the STAN package, the R STAN ARM package, okay? And this, is, this can be used to define the prior distribution. Right, and so there's a, uh, a little bit of documentation that you might have to read um, as far as prior distributions for the, uh, the stand models, okay? Um, that can be done, okay? So once we uh, define the engine, all right? So this is kind of the trickiest part, okay? How do we fit the model, okay? Fitting the model is the exact same function. Okay, so so here we have we've decided we said Bayes model is going to come from linear regression, and the engine is diff different, right? So the com contrast this to what we had back up here. We set the engine to be just LM. There was nothing else to use when we did LM, and then uh, and so we said you know linear regression LM. We stored that as the LM model. And then we fit it using this line. We say we take LM model and we pipe that into fit. Okay, so that part is exactly the same. So, despite being you know an entirely different model, you can just say take that Bayes model and then run the same fit. You know, fit uh, with uh, initial volume food regime. Okay, uh, and this is a huge, kind of a huge simplification because otherwise you'd have to really spend a, a lot of time. Uh, going through the documentation for um, for Stan, and, and you know you still have to do a little bit as far as setting the engine go, how that goes, and setting up the thing. Okay, um, but again, you know as as far as tidy models goes, uh, this is a, a very I think a well documented package where they they have you know several examples and uh, um, suggestions as far as getting these things set up. Okay, so once you have that fitting the model, this command remains exactly the same. All right, and so now you can say, okay, give me the results, okay? The results, when you do a Bayesian model, there's no more, um, you no longer have kind of uh, an estimate and a p-value and things like that. You know, for, for Bayesian model, things are a little bit different, okay? So you have um, the, uh, the median, okay? And then you also have the mean, um, absolute deviations, okay? Um, or is it the median absolute deviations? Something, that's, uh, that's what we have there, okay? Uh, standard deviation of the kind of the deviations uh, from there, right? And, you know, this, this uh, for Bayesian, um, it's, it's done by basically a Monte Carlo approach, right? And so you can kind of um, set a different seed to kind of uh, make sure that uh, that we get the same kind of thing. Okay, so this is uh, where did they where did they set the seed here? Okay, uh, and again, you can kind of get um, the tidy tidy results where you get kind of a confidence intervals and things like that. Okay, so here's the uh, the base fit, the estimates, and the standard errors, and this is based off of the the results there. So again, uh, the goal of all of this is that despite having kind of different engines, we, we need not um, have to relearn all of the, the syntax. This part, this portion is done in, in a similar fashion, okay? You can also get kind of your new points, right? And again, if you wanted to get new predictions, see, so we have the same new points that we've created earlier and you can kind of predict using the new points and you predict the new points with the confidence interval. And they, and just to kind of uh, here, it seems like a lot here, but it's just, they're just taking the results of the predictions for the new points and the uh, confidence interval predictions, right? So this, these lines here, predict base fit, new, new data equals new points type confidence interval. That's the exact same um, 
uh, same command that we did here, right? Predict, and we just changed it to base fit, new data is new points, type confidence interval, and it produces this. And then, you know, we wanted to bind those two together. So, so we do that right here in this line. And so making predictions using a different model or different engine um, kind of follows the, uh, the same format here, which, which is quite handy, I, I believe. Okay, and so here, here are the results and it looks kind of the same, okay? And again, um, it, it talks about itself and it says, you know, it, it seems a little bit silly using something like linear regression, especially when calling LM directly is a lot more succinct, okay? Um, and, uh, and it emphasizes, again, the problem with just these standard modeling functions like LM is that they don't separate what you want to do from the execution. So for example, the process of executing a formula has to happen repeatedly across model calls, even when the formula doesn't change. And so we can't you know, re recycle those things. Um, across the tidy models framework is that you can do some interesting things by incrementally creating a model, right? And you can kind of tune the models with the specification of the model to declare what parts of the model should be used. And this would be kind of hard if you're going to call a linear regression every time immediately, right? Just because that, that process takes a little bit, right? And so um, we have that, right? We, we've called a um, regreter a few times. And so the fitting process happens when you call the fit method, right? So when you call fit onto this thing, that's where, that's where the calculations happen. So you can kind of specify your model every single time a little bit differently. And then once you have that model specified, then you can have it fit to, uh, to the thing, right? So you can specify, you know, maybe a, a different Bayesian model with a different prior distribution or something like that. And you don't have to actually compute everything until you, um, until you run the fit. Okay, there was um, a second section Okay, and again, you can do uh, follow all of this inside. Um, if you go to get started on tidymodels.org slash get started, um, part two is pre-processing your data. And uh, you know, if, if this is something of interest to you, I, I recommend at least following through this tutorial, okay? And then following along on your computer itself and producing this, right? And so there, there's some um, examples of them kind of processing the data and make sure you go line by line and that you understand every single line that's being entered into the thing. Uh, it's very easy to see a code chunk and then your brain to just kind of skip over it and just read the text in between. But I would say, uh, take the time to actually read through each line and make sure you understand every line of that thing, okay? So tidy models, I think is, is very good as far as fitting machine learning and, and having a setup in a unified framework really that cleans up uh, just kind of a lot of the, the pain of having to learn a brand new package, okay? You want to use a new package, there's still going to be, have to be some reading and documentation and going through that. But as far as, you know, fitting a thing and making predictions from it, uh, it's really streamlined that. And I think that, in my opinion, puts um, R at a, at a competitive footing with Python. So, you know, one, one thing about Python and sklearn is that it has a very unified framework. Every time you want to try a different model, you can just make kind of the you know model that fit and model that predict and things like that. And that was that was very handy in um, in SK Learn, and you had all sorts of different uh, models available there. And Tidy Model, I think, uh, kind of creates a similar interface to try out different things in a rather um, quick fashion there. Okay, let me give you your last view quiz answer of the quarter or the academic year, I guess. Uh, and that is the letter E, E as an elephant, E as an elephant. Okay, again, none of this stuff is covered on the final exam. I'll record a short video cover, um, going over the document that I posted about what you can expect on the final. And, uh, and we will see you guys on Friday. Friday will be kind of a lighter uh, day as well. So uh, we'll see you then. You've made it to week 10. You guys are almost all done. So um, just hang in there for a few more days there. Okay, well, uh, have a good night and we'll see you guys on Friday.